Okay, so last class we talked about covalent bonding and basically how we draw the Lewis structures for covalent bonds. Now this class we're going to kind of expand on that. We're going to talk about molecular geometry. Now when you're looking at a water molecule, you'll see that when you see water molecules in a textbook um, or online, you'll see it kind of bent like this. And there is a reason why. So within this water molecule, we have electrons in the bonds, and then we have lone pairs of electrons. Now remember that like charges repel each other. So what's happening here is the lone electrons and um, the bonds are repelling each other, and then the lone electrons are repelling themselves, and the bonds are repelling themselves, okay? Um, and so what happens is this uh, repulsion of these negative charges of electrons all add up to a uh, mo molecular shape, and we call this molecular geometry. Um, and this is called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So the electron pairs, both shared and unshared, so both in a bond and both not in a bond, and the outermost energy level try to get as far apart from each other as possible. This determines the shape of the molecule. Now, these electron pairs are just talking about on the central atom of a molecule. That means the atom that's in the middle, okay? So, unshared pairs on um, atoms that are on the outside of the molecule do not affect the shape. It's just the one that's on the middle. So, here, oxygen is in the middle. So, oxygen's unshared pairs is what's going to be affecting the shape there. Now... Um, first, we're going to look. We're going to look at these examples of shapes. So there are five different shapes we're going to look at. There's linear. There's bent. There's trigonal planar. There's pyramidal. There's tetrahedral, and then there's trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, that's actually six. So we have six shapes that we're going to look at. The first shape we're going to look at is linear. Now, to determine sh the shape, we have to look at how many atoms are we looking at. How many atoms are involved? And um, do those atoms, do the central atom, have unshared pairs? So first we're going to look at two atoms. So our example here is H2. So I've drawn the H2 molecule there. And we notice that uh, it's only two atoms. There's no central atom there. Um, and so the only shape that this can be is linear. You can't bend a bond. This bond is not going to be able to bend. Um, and so the only shape in... H2 is going to be linear. Now, you can also have a linear shape with three atoms, okay? Our example is CO2. So here we have CO2 drawn, okay? And we see um, that carbon is in the middle. Now, notice carbon's in the middle, but notice one thing about carbon. There are no unshared pairs on carbon. All of carbon's electrons are in bonds. And so what this is going to cause to do is going to cause that these double bonds are going to repel each other as far apart as they can go. So I'm going to show you kind of what this looks like. So we're going to open this FET simulation here. And notice that we have carbon dioxide, okay? Notice that no matter how much I move this um, oxygen, the other oxygen is going to try to get as far away from it as possible. Even if I try to bend it and force them together, they're going to just pop back and they're not going to be able um, to stay that way because these electrons in these bonds are going to be repelling each other. Okay, now the next shape we're going to look at, oh, and again, central atom must have no unshared pairs. So for it to have three, for it to have a linear shape, it should have three atoms and no unshared pairs on the central atom. Now there's another shape we're going to look at that has three atoms, but does has an, have an unshared pair. So our example is water. So here we have a water molecule drawn. And um, again, this is the example I used when we were talking about shapes, that these unshared pairs are actually going to be repelling the bonds. And so what's going to happen is these unshared pairs are going to be pushing these bonds downward, and it's going to cause the molecule to bend, hence the bent shape. So the central atom does have an unshared pair. So to have a bent shape, your central atom is going to have three, or your molecule is going to have three atoms with unshared pairs. Okay. Now this is what water is going to look like. 
So here we have water. Um, notice it looks, it's in that bent shape that we know and love, but it has those two unshared pairs at the top. And so what those two unshared pairs are doing are they are pushing down this, um, these hydrogens, they're pushing them down to get away from them to repel those bonds. And again, if I try to push those hydrogens up to kind of make it a linear shape, those unshared pairs are just going to end up pushing them down. And so um, no matter how I try it, they're just going to end up pushing them down. And even if I try to put those unshared pairs on top and bottom, it's still going to repel it and cause the, um, the, or the hydrogens to be pushed down. Now the next shape I'm gonna look at is trigonal planar, and this has to do with four atoms, okay? So our example is CH2O. So um, I'm gonna do this one with y'all. So we have our, um, we need to determine the valence electrons and the number of bonds it needs to make. So carbon has four valence electrons and it needs to make four bonds. Hydrogen has one valence electron and it needs to make one bond. Oxygen, has six valence electrons and it needs to make two. So carbon is gonna go in the middle in this case. Okay, so we have carbon in the middle. We're gonna put oxygen on top. Okay, and I'm gonna put hydrogen on the side and the bottom. All right, so when we do this, we see um, that we're gonna make these bonds with hydrogen because they're the easiest bonds to make. And then I'm going to make this bond with carbon. But notice that oxygen and carbon both still have that single electron, and they both still need to make a bond. So they're actually going to make another bond with them. Okay. And so um, when we do this, when we draw this structure, we need to draw it looking like this. We need to draw it where the carbon is in the center, the oxygen is directly on top, but the hydrogens are bent away because the the whole point of drawing these molecules in these certain shapes is because we want to be able to show them um, how they would look in three-dimensional space. Okay, so here um, we're going to do another example of a trigonal planar. So this is a trigonal planar. This is not CH2O, but it's still the trigonal planar shape. So notice that they're all on the same plane. That's what planar means, is that they're all on the same plane. One's not sticking out, one's not sticking behind. But again, if I try to force these together, they're just gonna pop back. Um, and so we want to draw our structure um, with the two bottom ones angled because that's what it looks like in three-dimensional space. Okay, now the next one we're gonna look at, oh, and again, the central atom has no unshared pairs. So carbon has no unshared pairs. Now the next one, um, the next shape we're gonna look at has four atoms, but there are unshared pairs on the central atom. So we have NH3. So valence electrons and bonds. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, needs to make three. Hydrogen has one, needs to make one. So nitrogen's gonna go in the middle because it needs to make the most bonds, okay? And then the hydrogens, I'm gonna put them again around the nitrogen to where those single electrons are facing it. Okay, and so we're going to make a bond here, a bond here, a bond here. So all the hydrogens are happy, and the nitrogen has made three bonds. But again, when you draw this um, structure, you want to draw it to where it's showing that these unshared pairs are actually repelling all three of these hydrogens. Okay, they're all, it's pushing them down in that pyramid shape. So you're gonna draw the two hydrogens angled and then one hydrogen directly below. So again, we're drawing this this way because we want to make sure we can show what it would look like if it was oriented in three-dimensional space. So we'll see an example of this here. We'll see that NH3, here we go. Um, notice that unshared pair is pushing all those electrons or all those hydrogens down. And anytime I try to put um, or force a hydrogen on top to make it trigonal planar, it's not going to be able to do that because these bonds, that unshared pair is still pushing those um, bonds downward. And again, you can't force those bonds together because those valence electrons are repelling each other. Okay, now the next shape is gonna be tetrahedral, okay? This involves five atoms. Now this is the um, only shape that we're gonna look at that involves five atoms. And our example is CH4. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. Anytime you have a carbon 
in the compound, carbon's always going to go in the middle, okay? And we have four hydrogens surrounding it. So we have CH4, so we're going to make those four bonds. Now again, what's going to happen is that these bonds are going to repel each other, okay? And we're drawing the structure kind of bent like this to show that those bonds are repelling each other. And so we're gonna draw carbon with hydrogen on top, one angled, one on the bottom, and another one angled. And that's because they are all repelling each other. So again, this is what the tetrahedral shape looks like. We have carbon in the middle with a hydrogen on top, and then three hydrogens on the bottom. So you see how it's oriented in space. Now I draw that hydrogen on the bottom directly below it in my 3D structure, but it, as you can see that that hydrogen is not directly below um, the uh, top hydrogen because they are also repelling each other here. Um, but that's just to kind of show you that there's a hydrogen back here um, behind the top hydrogen. Okay, and the central atom has no unshared pairs. Now this last one is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, this one actually has something called an expanded octet. Okay, this happens in th period three or higher. Um, when bonded to chlorine or fluorine, they can have an expanded octet, meaning that it can have more, um, more than eight um, valence electrons. And that's because it can uh, force electrons in its empty d orbital. Okay. So on period three or higher, meaning period three, period four, period five, or period six, there is an empty d orbital there. And so what happens is that it's going to force its electrons into that empty d orbital, and um, it's going to cause them, it's going to cause this phosphorus to have more than um, eight electrons. So to draw the structure, we, we can't even just predict it, so we kind of just have to draw it. Um, what it looks like. So we're going to have a fluorine on top, fluorine on the side, fluorine on the bottom, and then two fluorines angled. And so basically what this is going to look like, it's going to kind of look like a spinning top. Or if you know, if you've ever seen back in the olden days, they used to play this thing called jacks. And it was with a dice and these little jacks. And so it actually looks like um, a jack. So this is what it looks like. Okay. Now notice here, I'm going to do it this way because it's a little easier to see it. So there is a fluorine on top, in this case it's chlorine. There's a chlorine on top and a chlorine on the bottom, okay? And then there are three chlorines that are equatorial to each other, meaning that they are on the same equator, okay? So there are three chlorines that are on the same equator. Think of the equator um, like on Earth. And so um, there's going to be one on top, one on the bottom, and then three um, equatorial on the same equator. So um, that's it for molecular geometry. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about polarity.